Uh, I'm Aaron Baker. I'm the chair of the English department. And you know, this is a big department. You probably all know that. Um, we have 1,800 majors. We have about 350 grad students. We have 270 people who teach in English. It's a big department. So I do, you know, in a big department like that, I do a fair amount of stuff. But one of the best things that I do is this kind of event in which I, we acknowledge the success of students. It's one of the most fun things to do. Because if you think about it, it's the most important thing that the faculty and staff in the English department are there to do, promote the success of students. And that's why we're here. Um, today, before we acknowledge the students and give them these awards that they've earned, we have a couple of invited speakers. So let me get right to those speakers. The first of our speakers is Gail Fisher. Gail is an alumna of the English department. She finished her BA in 19, should I tell me? It's okay. okay. Yeah, I figured since you gave it to us, you were okay with it. She, she graduated in 1967 from the English department. And she went on to a long and very successful career teaching in the Tempe schools. She was chair of the Department of English at Corona del Sol High School in South Tempe and taught for a total of 30 years in the Tempe High School District. So Gail's going to speak to us a little bit and then we'll uh, have our second keynote speaker. So Gail Fisher. I think it's, oh good, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this because I retired my teacher voice a while ago, and so I think this will work better. Anyway, thank you again, Erin. Um, I'm really honored to be here and will briefly address you as the golden 50-year English graduate. I probably follow the expected path of any English major in my day by becoming a teacher. I have no regrets. The feedback and gratitude I experienced is priceless. As a public school teacher, all the people I worked with, including many student teachers, we all sought to educate students to the best of their ability. Teaching for me was a satisfying career in a subject area I loved, only second to music. I forgot to mention, I began ASU as a music major. Piano was my <coughs> instrument. But I realized during my freshman year that piano wasn't my strongest strength so I switched majors to English. As a TA in the department, I started my English master's degree, but encountered a stumbling block, the foreign language requirement. Even though I had a minor in Spanish, Spanish was not recognized to fulfill the master's language requirement. I was told to learn either French or German if I wanted to continue. Not wanting more language coursework, I switched to a master's degree in English ed. I must say, knowing Spanish served me very well during my teacher's year and my life in Arizona and the Southwest. Perhaps things have changed by now. After my master's degree, I earned 60 graduate hours in various English language reading and education courses. Looking back, I wish I had formulated those hours into a PhD program, but I didn't want the restrictions of a formal program. Early in my career, I wrote articles on teaching methods I used in the classroom for the Arizona English Bulletin. One of the pieces was picked up by Scholastic for publication in a book, and I was paid $50. <laughs> I excitedly shared this with my high school principal. He was a tall guy who towered over me. I remember him patting my head and saying, that's great, Gail. That was one of those aha moments when I decided going forward, I would freelance and write for money. My English courses provided me with, excuse me, the background to write as well as teach. You know what, I need a sip of water. <laughs> Husbands are so handy, aren't they? Thank you. Mm. I've written hundreds of nonfiction articles on a variety of topics for newspapers and magazines. 
all over the country and won writing awards. I also learned to do my own photography to accompany the stories. For several years, I was a community columnist for the Arizona Republic, and once I even landed a freelance article in USA Today. My husband, Mel Kessler, and I are huge volunteers with the city of Tempe. We helped to set in motion the Tempe Center for the Arts. In the year 2000, we formed a political action committee to place a ballot measure for a sales tax increase to fund a performing arts center for Tempe. Residents were asked to approve a one-tenth of one percent sales tax increase to provide $65 million to build the center. We marketed the tax by equating the cost to voters as the price of one Big Mac per family in Tempe once a month. The measure passed by a two-to-one margin. I was privileged to serve on the executive committee for the building. In the process, I learned all about the architecture of arts buildings, a really rich experience. The Tempe Center for the Arts opened in 2007. I founded the nonprofit Friends of Tempe Center for the Arts and was the first president. I still serve on the board. I am also a board member, a current board member of the National Society of Arts and Letters. I understand the Department of English gives out an annual or annual Glendon and Catherine Swarthout Awards in Writing. I met Glendon and heard him speak several times. I've also taught Bless the Beasts and the Children to hundreds of my students. I admire him, his work, and the legacy his family left to ASU. I have another con connection to Glendon. One of my ghostwriting clients was inspired by Glendon to write his own memoir. My client, an extremely well-known real estate developer in Arizona, used to have lunch once a month with Glendon and other accomplished business executives. Glendon repeatedly admonished this elite group to write their memoirs. This struck a chord with my client, and he contacted me to work on his memoir since I had previously written a company history for his firm. It was a great experience for me to have this opportunity. Why am I sharing all this? I believe that my background in language, literature, culture, critical thinking, and communication prepared me for all these experiences and more. When opportunities presented themselves, I felt confident to explore them. Of course, I've ex experienced rejection, defeat, and disappointment. My advice is not to waste time or brain cells on setbacks or negative emotions. If something doesn't work out the first time, try something else. When one door closes, I've always found another one opens up. I thank all my ASU professors, such as my beloved advisor, Nick Salerno, who's somewhere up there looking down, for sharing with me the insights bound in the study of language and literature. To all the graduates and award winners here today, congratulations on choosing a course of study that will give you both personal and professional fulfillment. Thank you.